So as you can see, it is a cold and frozen morning. And Riley's got a popsicle. So Riley, what truck are we taking today? Uh, the blue tow truck. The big blue tow truck. I've got a tow to do today up over the mountain, so I'm gonna go drop Riley off at school and then uh, go get hooked up and we're gonna go for a ride. Okay, you ready? Let's go. All right, we are here at U-Haul. We're gonna be picking up one of their 26 foot trucks. It's the biggest size truck they have. And then we got to tow it, wow that's bright, we got to tow it over to Eugene, their main fleet maintenance shop. I guess it's got a, a steering box that uh, blew a seal and is leaking and they take that serious, so we're towing it. Okay, we are going to lower our tow bar down and then we got to slide the bed back enough to get the forks out. That one right there is the truck we're getting. So, these should be the ones I need. Okay, this is our truck. It does run and drive just fine, all that stuff. Steers, does all the things. It just, uh, steering box is leaking so they don't want a chance driving it. So, we'll drive it over there and hook up to the truck. Let's uh, make sure we don't lock ourselves out of it. Okay, somewhat center. We're gonna grab that front axle. All right, so check this out. Remember in a previous video, I said that these forks and these forks were duplicates as far as what they fit, and they are, so I wouldn't need to carry these ones. But it turns out when I flip these receivers to the low side, this fork, which should go this way, hits here and doesn't sit all the way in the bottom. That's no good. No, now it's jammed, okay. Whereas this fork sits nice and flush in the bottom and works. So it turns out I do have to carry both sets of forks or I can just ditch these ones. Uh, when the receivers are on the high side flipped over, this would not be an issue, but it turns out it is on the low side. So we'll throw this one on the other side and put these back. Okay, now we're gonna crawl under and uh, chain down the front axle. Uh, you see those wood blocks that I leave by the toolbox so they're handy to get. That's why this is with these little tires on these trucks. Bring it down to tow height. We'll probably tow it right about there. Oh, here's what we can see now. And this is not 100% accurate, but it should be close. 27,000 pounds on the drives. Good to go. All right, we're all hooked up, ready to go. Uh, we've got safety chains on, front axle tied down. Got our tow lights on in the back, the drive shaft's pulled out. Oh, one thing I screwed up. I said in the last video where once something's on the, on the underreach, you can't slide the bed back to get stuff out of the top boxes. So I had to be strategic about where I put stuff. Uh, my driveline hanger is in the top box and I hooked the truck up before I pulled it out, so just had to use ratchet straps instead, but that's fine. Got tow light on the back. We just run a ratchet strap from one handle to the other to hang it from. Bungee cord it in place. And if you are not using spring clamps to hold up strap ends, you are missing out on life. Just go down to Harbor Freight, buy like 37 of these for $2, and change your life. But we are ready to go, so the only thing left to do is go take a picture for Instagram so everybody knows how cool we are and then hit the road. Okay, we stopped at the gas station here to get some supplies for the trip and there's two things I want to point out. Number one is how far away this truck is from the bed and how you can tell whether you're going to hit the bed or not. And something you can do is if you measure from the center of that pivot point to the widest point of the truck, the farthest away from it, which on this one is out here at the corner of this bumper, and then measure from the center of that pivot point 
to the edge of the bed with how far out you are. If you are out farther than from the pivot point to the farthest point of the truck, which is right here on this one, you will not hit the bed even if you jackknife it. So like right now it looks like I'm kind of close, but I'm actually four inches farther out on this distance than I am on this distance, or that one doesn't matter. But that means I could completely jackknife it and that will swing right in here and miss. Now the other thing is since we're about to go over that big giant snowy mountain right there, well not over it, kind of like up around the side of it, uh, we check the weather and we do that with a uh, trip check. If you are driving anywhere in Oregon, go to tripcheck.com. It is road conditions and traffic camps all over the state. This is that mountain pass up there. Now when I looked this morning, it was snowing up there. And if you see now, DOT guys got the road nice and clear. It is 33.6 degrees, so it should be melted. There might be some icy spots, 11 mile an hour wind, but you can look anywhere in the state, see the road conditions. It'll tell you slowdowns, it'll tell you accidents, it'll tell you construction, weather. This is the handiest tool out there for traveling around Oregon, especially in the winter time. So if you're in Oregon, check that out. But it looks good for now, so we are gonna head over the mountain. All right, we're up on top of the pass now, and not nearly as much snow as I expected. It's kind of raining right now, so I think it's washing it away, but you see where they sanded on the way up, and they probably, actually, I can see where they got some sand started on the way down, so DOT crew is out doing their thing. So we say thank you to these guys because they are the reason that road stays open all winter, and they are about to be very busy for the next five months. And I am going to have to cross that mountain a whole lot of time for the next five months, so thank you to those guys. Okay, we're over the valley now. The scale is closed. It looks like it just closed because that is the DOT scale master pulling out right now. So, like, we just, just missed the scales being open. Uh, but that means we can pull in here and uh, weigh our drive axles on the scale and calibrate our new air scale on the back. So, that's handy. Okay, our front axle is right at 8,000 pounds. He left his thermos there and everything. That means he is chasing someone down. He did not want to leave right now. So pull the drives up on there and we are 27,800, which is exactly what our scale said. Which means when I set it uh, yesterday, uh, just by knowing what my drive axles weigh empty and all that stuff, I was dead on. So I'm gonna get out and check and just make sure that's still what it's saying. And uh, should be good. Go up, drive past it. It's back here. It is saying 27,000. 500. So I'm going to tweak it just a little bit and make it say 28,000. That's 200 pounds on the upside. So that should be a good little buffer zone. I'm on this one. Now look, he left his thermos, all his paperwork. Yeah, he's chasing someone. Okay. A oh, little too much. So that says 28,000 which is 200 pounds over what the scale is actually reading. So close that, should be good. I just realized that it is uh, dead on 12 o'clock, so he might have went to lunch instead of chasing someone. But it'd be more fun if he was chasing someone, so we're gonna go with that. Oh, there he is. I wonder if he chased a log truck or something up that road. Now you might say that I got really lucky that I happened to hit that scale during the five minutes that the DOT guy wasn't there checking trucks, but I've always kind of felt that if you're worried about rolling through the scales while the DOT's there and having them look at your truck, you probably shouldn't be doing what you're doing anyway. So if you checked your truck out beforehand, you got your paperwork in order, and you're hauling the load the way you're supposed to be hauling it, what are you worried about? Cruise right on through the scale. Let them look. It's not that big a deal. All right, we are here, and we just got to figure out where in the heck we're gonna put it. All right, just like that, we are unloaded and out of here. I had to park totally in their way to unload the thing, so I just got out and unloaded it. And you can see it's following me into the yard right now. I am just gonna head out the other side of the yard and they're gonna pull that one into the shop. I'm guessing I just hit a stoplight totally wrong because all of a sudden there's a million cars coming into, look, this is a roundabout that goes into a roundabout. Welcome to Oregon.
Alright, well it is 1 o'clock, so we'll be back over the mountain before it ices back over for the night, which means uh, unless something cool or catastrophic happens on the way home, that is it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Yeah, be about 15 Mountain Dews mixed in there. I wonder where Matt's at.